spirit. You know, God can change, he can change people around here. Can he change sons around? Oh my gosh. Man, you, you just keep on praying and believing and kicking and snorting and biting. <laughs> Is it? You know, he's neat. I don't know what, I'm sure he, I wish you know one of those two, but just to see the change. And I bet you there's days you, before, did you play in the bars before you got saved? Yeah. Man, I could tell. But look at that man. <laughs> Same He's the same pop. <laughs> yeah, quite fairly close, probably the same age. But you know what? It's so neat, though, how God can change things around. So, Ma, we're going to have you tell about Him and what God's done in His heart and how you prayed and travailed and whatever, and then you just preach the gospel the way you want to preach. Amen. Introduce yourself. Well, I'm Celeste, and I'm uh, Remington's mom. And, Whoa. you know, I've never give, given a testimony in front of a bunch of people. You know, I'm really good, like, one-on-one. -on -one. And, uh, but, you know, I, I grew up uh, with some, a couple of parents. And um, they were really good uh, parents. They were smart, educated, uh, very successful in, you know, high-level uh, jobs. Uh, but my and my very earliest recollection recollection was um, fun. I loved them. I wanted to be just like them. You know, they uh, blocked off the street. Back then, it was uh, folk music, and they had um, a, a tailing pond trio. So anybody could get up and sing and play, and so that's where that all started. You know. Uh, we, the kids would run around, we'd be churning ice cream. Oh my gosh, it was fun, 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 fun. And uh, then we, we started moving around. My dad was a geologist, and uh, so we started moving around, and um, things started changing. You know, those were my earliest recollections. And then as I got older as a teenager, why then things started, you know, the divorce and all of that. And um, you, and uh, Right after my earliest recollections, my parents, one traveled all the time and one slept all day. So there was, you know, we, we didn't have too much direction. We pretty much went, uh, you know, our own way, not too much um, direction or anything. And um, after the divorce, we, we moved to Arizona, this little town here. And um, for a while, I lived with my grandmother. Now, my grandmother was a God-fearing gal. She was very active, prominent in the town, very active in church. And so even from my earliest recollections from going to church, I remember being a believer all my life. I hear tell I was baptized, you know, in the Methodist church when I was very small. So I remember hearing the word, you know, all my life. But I didn't really have a whole lot of direction, and so as I got older, I did have that little bit of uh, knowledge. And uh, but as I got older, you know, without too much direction, I started finding direction with, um, you know, men. As you you get older, you 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 leave the house when you're 18. I'm out of here, you know, and you pick a guy and whatever and you pick one that doesn't complain about how much you drink you know because they drink a lot you know and uh, that uh, situation was <laughs> that situation it, you know as we progressed in our you know our oh it's you know you don't want to know alcoholism it became a pretty violent situation i had two major um relationships one um, was and so when I got out of that violent situation I, I got a one that was happy a happy drunk you know so I thought oh that would fix it you know and so um, but those were my two major relationships I had minors but they produced two children and uh, th so they were raised you know by an alcoholic mother and um, uh, my biggest biggest uh, block about even coming to the Lord, you know, how, how to act, really come to the Lord and have a relationship. The biggest block in my life has been that shame, you know, they had to endure, you know, that ugly stuff. And, um, but anyway, uh, I, I came to after that second, um, 
relationship, I, I woke up one day and I said, you know, um, and, and I worked. I've, I've always worked. Both of my relationships, I've always been the breadwinner my entire life. I've had two major jobs. I've been at my last one for like 23 years. I mean, once I started working, you couldn't get rid of me. You know, I was, I was uh, functional in that way. And um, so I came to the realization and it was like, wow, I drink every day. You know, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to test myself. Can I stop? And, you know, I couldn't. So I went and uh, asked for help. And um, I, I put my kids with some family members where they'd be not safe and sound. And I said, look, if you don't, I told my family, if you don't take my kids right now, I've got to go to treatment. And if you can't, you know, I've got to give them up you know, because I'm sick. And so I went into treatment. And um, after treatment, I went into a halfway house for a while because, um, you know, I just felt like I needed that piece. And uh, I, when I got out of the halfway house, I moved across the street from my sponsor. I had meetings once a week, you know. I was, you know, getting to be one of them black belts, you know, and, <laughs> in, you know, AA, you know. And uh, so I called for my kids, I lived in Phoenix, and I called for my kids and I said, okay, I got us a nice apartment, sponsors right across the street, go into, a, a, you know, even then, I think for a couple of years, I went every day, every week, you know, I had, I had them over every week. And um, so I, I was sober for five years. And, um, yeah. And, so I had my kids and I got involved in their school, you know, and I was like being a real mom, you know. And um, as they grew up, well, I had some, something happen to me, you know, in my apartment. Somebody, they were breaking in, you know, homeless people or somebody or whatever. So I, I said, I, I'm moving out of here, you know, and I went with my brother, my uh, one of my other brothers. I have three. And uh, they took us in for a while because I said, I, I just, I'm too scared to go home, you know, with kids. So I, um, at this time, um, you know, Remington was getting to be, Remington and I are polar opposites. You know, he's very outgoing and I am just the biggest introvert there ever was, you know, as you can plainly see. And... Um, <laughs> He started getting a little, you know, feisty, and I'm like, look, if you cannot, you know, so I couldn't handle the discipline part. You know, that's where you need a guy, right? But I, no, you know, I, I didn't need any men in my life, you know, I, you know, I could do this. And the other thing is, I never asked for help. You know, I always had a job, and I could buy groceries, and I could pay rent. And I, I never got in a system of some sort, you know, so I, I didn't think I needed to ask for help, you know. So finally he just got, you know, a little bit too hard to handle. And I said, you know, then you can't be here, you know, because you have a little sister. And, you know, so he ended up going on the streets of sorts, you know. And this is, you know, so I moved in with my brother. And um, anyway, I relapsed, you know. And... Um, as time went on, but, but that was back when, and I heard a joke the other day, it was kind of funny, uh, and stop me if I'm getting too long here. Um, uh, you know, I bought a house, you know, back in the, w when they were on sale, you know, and they were letting everybody buy a house. And um, luckily I was smart enough to say, look, I need a house of this much, because I can only, you know, I'll only pro I promise I can pay it back. So, but anyway, I bought us a house and we moved there and everything. And then I started drinking again, you know. Um, so I'm trying, you know, we have, oh, my family is, gets together a lot. Lots of blues parties, lots of Christmas parties, lots of party, party, party. And, you know, I, I just picked it up. You know, but after so long, you think, oh, I'm immune now. You know, I, it won't bother me. And so I started drinking or whatnot, but I, I've always worked. And so Remington was off on his own um, thing. You know, I did what I could, but he was getting pretty rowdy. I mean, he was getting scary, you know. Uh, he, he had those uh, friends that were, 
you know, you know, carried guns and everything. You know, that scared me. And I had to, you know, he'd bring a girlfriend home, and I'd go, okay, yeah, you can stay here. You know, you can sleep in the garage, but. You know, it, this did not work. This did not work. Finally, I said, finally I said, no, you, you know, I hear him dealing pills in there and everything, and I bust in and I say, out, out, you know, out, everybody out. And that's all, that's the only new way I knew how to handle it. I didn't know how to talk to him or anything. And I'm sorry. But, uh, so anyway, he went to jail, you know, uh, two or three times, you know, the last time. Now, whenever this happens, you have a death. It's a death, you know. He's gone. He's away. I remember just walking up and down the hallways crying, Remington, Remington, you know, it was like a death. And uh, my 90-year-old dad came to live with me for a while. Well, I was just stressing out, you know, because he was getting to where, you know, his bathtub was a pool in the backyard, you know. It, it, was, it was getting hard for me. And um, <laughs> and uh, so um, you know, so the last time he went to prison and everything, and that you know that was the death uh, part. But I told myself, and and that's when I finally said, you know, God, I give it to you. I knew who to give it to, you know. And finally, I think right at that point, you know, I didn't just give it him to God. I felt like I just give, I give, you know, and I may not have said it in so many words, but I just, I was at the end of my rope, you know, and uh, so, uh, but I said, I'm not giving up, I'm not giving up, you know, and my sister-in-law lost her job, so she was a perfect person to take, you know, grandpa, and I just concentrated a lot on him, and of course his sister, you know, his sister, you know, uh, was there, and she was dealing with this all best she could, good student, whatever. She was, you know, a good child, you know, and um, she she wasn't, you know, she wasn't, I had a good child and a <laughs> and so, and, um, so, so I said, but I'm not giving up, you know, and by golly, if there was one thing, I, I joined the wellness program because, see, I could get $45 every quarter, and that was, boom, my overnight ticket up to Kingman. I could spend the night, do food visits. You know, when he was in Florence, that was right handy because, you know, I inherited my mom's house there, and, uh, and my mom was alive for a while while you were over there in Florence. Uh, but... Um, that was right handy and I could do all the visits I could get every weekend you know when he got went to Kingman you know I said look it's gonna be a quarterly you know that's a little uh, hard but anyway you, we could talk every day and so as I uh, you know and when he first went in all I knew to do was you know read the Bible read the Bible and I would pray and I you know, his room at my house, I tacked up a cross and everything, you know. And, um... Holy water. Yeah, you know. <laughs> and, uh, but, I, you know, I, I, looking back, I was just, you know, help me, help me. And, um, but I didn't know what to do for myself, see. Because in treatment, you're not going to send them off and get fixed. You know, if you want to go and help them get fixed, you know, you have to look at yourself. You're not allowed to look at them. You know, you've got to look at yourself and see that's, you know. But I didn't ever want to give up on him. And uh, so as I saw the transformation in his life, you know, I thought, yeah, yeah, that's a ticket. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're, oh, I'm so happy, Rem. You know, that's what you're supposed to do. But it was really happening, you know. And he was talking and I started looking at myself, you know, more and more. You know, um, yeah, I know that and everything. And so... Um, you know, as I prayed and everything, um, I thought, you know, that's what I need to do, get in a good Bible-based church where they know me. I, t I picked a little one, you know, where they could know me, re rewards and all. And, um, you know, I, and, um, you know, that's another story in itself when those people took me. You know, they still wondering what's up with me. But, um, <laughs> you know, I, I am a work in progress, you know, and... Um, but, uh, but uh, again, I'm not going to ever give up. I'm sticking with it, you know, and that, that's it.
So as, as he was, I saw the transformation in him, why then, boom, that led me off on that uh, road. And so more and more and more, he just really, like, okay, I, like, I went to church, and I'm like, I'm a member. You know, I went to the classes, and I, you know, became a member and everything. And, you know, I'm a deacon, but I thought you had to be the deacon so that you could, like, do the trays, you know, the communion trays, you know, I thought you had to go to those classes and be called a deacon because, you know, so you could help in the church officially. I didn't know just everybody could help in the church, you know, this is, you know, how I thought. And, but anyway, so while I went with, you know, all of the steps and everything, um, Remington finally did um, come out and he has never ceased to amaze me, you know, he's not just you know, a church-going, God-fearing man, uh -huh. you know. He's like, has is just, you know, sky's the limit, you know, for everything he does in his life. It just, it so amazes me, and that's a really, really, he brought his sister to the Lord, and um, he was instrumental. In so here we are, you know, um, just living for the Lord best best we can. Uh, now, my biggest obstacle was the guilt and shame of raising children and, and causing that, you know. But uh, my brother gave me uh, Psalm 102, uh, verse uh, 28. The children of your servants will continue, and their descendants will be established before you. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, well, I can't take credit for where he lives. I, I don't have to take credit for right. what he went through. That's right. So, That's right. That's right. Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there on that. Hallelujah. Amen. God is good. Oh, man. Thank you, Mom. <laughs> oh man, thank you Jesus, thank you Jesus, God is good, amen, that's the power of God in my life, and so I'm so blessed, uh, she preaches way better than I do, so man, amen, amen. that was amazing mom, <laughs> I have brought my Bible, This is the Bible that my mom bought me in 2016 when I got out of prison. Come on. I just want to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord God, thank you so much for just your awesomeness and your goodness, Father God. And like my mom said, this the sky is the limit for all of us. And your word is so clear and your plan is so clear, God. You want to take broken people like us, surrender our lives to you, God. And you want to use us and you know the best for us. And you're a good, good father. Lord, I just pray. Just can work tonight as we just get into your word, Lord. I just pray we we need your we need your spirit, God. It's not by might, it's not by power, it's by your spirit, God. It's by the tangible presence of of God in our lives and what Jesus did. So, Father God, we just 
receive your spirit. We ask for your Holy Spirit to come here. Remind us of what Jesus taught us. <clears throat> to speak to us about Jesus tonight, God. We want to know about, about your son Jesus, of through whom we have life and who we have peace with God and are reconciled to God and have that relationship with God, Lord. So just pray as we get into your word, Lord. Just touch our hearts, Father God. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. I guess it's just simple, and that's just, you know, things got messed up. Things got really messed up in our lives and in the beginning of history. And I want to look in the beginning of, of our history, and I want to take a look at when things got messed up and how things got messed up and how... Um, how we can, uh, how it was made right, how our lives are made right, how we're restored, how we're reconciled, how we're more than conquerors today. Because things got really messed up, just like my mom said, she don't even want to mention some of the things. Just like me, I don't even want to mention some of the messed up things. And I want to just talk about just the power of the gospel, the simple gospel, the simple power that's available to everybody. It's not some secret knowledge. It's not something that you have to read between the lines. You know, this isn't Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. You know, this is a simple, simple gospel. Amen? This is simple about how God came into his own creation in the form of a baby, knew no sin, and lived till he was 33 and gave up his life for us Amen. so we could be forgiven. We're forgiven. Everything is forgiven. The debt is paid because of what Jesus did. And it's just simply a matter of letting God be God. Amen. And I just wanted to talk about that because that's been impressed upon me, this letting God be God. What does that mean? Right. Let God be God. What does that mean? Let, if I let somebody do something, that means I give them permission. That means it's a choice. That part we are kind of got. We kind of got that part down. But one part we probably don't have got down is who God is. You know, who God is. Really. Because sometimes we think we're God. You know? Sometimes we want to be God. And sometimes we make something that God created God. There's only one God who created everything. And in the book of Genesis, being in chapter 3, we can go there in Genesis chapter 3. But the main, the main moral of the story is that God has a good plan. It's a clear plan. And it's a free gift that he wants to give to us. It's not hard. But we do have to let God be God. We do have to soften our hearts. We do have to make a decision that we want God to rule and reign in our life finally. We have to say, hmm, maybe I'm not God. Maybe I didn't create the world. Maybe I didn't create the birds and the clouds. And maybe I can't, don't have any power to create anything or do anything. And maybe I could spend all of my life figuring out that I'm not God. Or I could just say, maybe God is God. You know, Instead of counting how many toes the dragon has. Or going to, you know psychology or going to school or seeking after anything else other than God. You know, all that other stuff is good when you have God. When you know God, if you want to go to school and you want to do that stuff, great. But if you do it without God, you're just spinning your wheels. You're just spinning your wheels. And in Genesis, put this in context, it tells us about the beginning of the world. In verse 1 says, in the beginning, God in the beginning, God. He's the one that created the heavens and he created the earth. And sometimes maybe we need to just remember that. Maybe some of us don't even know that in this, in this room. God created the heavens and the earth and he created everything in them. He's the one that created everything. He did everything. He spoke and it came into existence. And he had a plan from the beginning. 
And he created man. And he said, you know what? It's not good for man to be alone. Let me create a helper suitable for him. So, he, thank you, G. Can I get an amen? Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We men need some help. Come on. A helper suitable for him. Okay, I like what Pastor Ron said. A suit, you want to get one that fits right. It takes a while for the tailor to make that suit. You know, you don't want to get the wrong suit on. I like that. Okay. So he, man, woman, in paradise. Can I get an amen? Amen. Okay. Maybe that's just me that likes that. I don't know, but I think that's a good plan. How about you? Okay. Man and woman in paradise. Okay. They were naked. They were in paradise. He said, hey... That's a great plan. I just can we camp there for a second? You know, can we just think about that for a second? You know, and it's not a lie when we say God has a good plan. God has a good plan for you. Okay. What he did was in the middle of the garden, he put the tree of life and he put the tree of good and evil in the middle of the garden. And he gave a command, a simple clear command. So you can eat from any tree in the garden, but from the tree in the middle of the garden, you should, you should not eat the tree of good and evil. In the day that you eat it, you will die. Isn't he a good, good father? Simple, clear command. Man, woman, paradise, here's your command. Don't do this. They weren't wondering, what's the purpose of my life? And he's like, hey, Eve, I found this tree over here, man. Come on. Let's go check it out. You know, I put a swing in it. Let's go over here, you know. Hey, you know, on the way, they're passing that tree in the middle of the garden. You know, okay, that's the tree not to eat of. Cool. Let's go do whatever, whatever we want to do here. Tend the garden, keep the garden. So that's where we're at. Simple, clear command from God. And then in, uh, we're going to get into... Uh, Chapter 3, verse 1. I got a couple notes. Chapter 3, verse 1. It says this. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other beast of the field that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God actually say you shall not eat of any tree in the garden? Okay. Point number one, or just a couple points that I want to draw out of this verse is, this was the serpent. Okay. That word serpent is nakash. Nakash. It is. That's the word. Nakash. Okay? Nakash. Okay? That word means serpent in the Hebrew. Right? And uh, you know what? That word also means... Uh, it also means divination. Divination. Okay? So that's pretty interesting, right? Divination. Okay? Divination. In that word, it has the divine in there. You know, divination. Telling the future. Um, supernatural. We know that the Bible warns against that stuff. Right? We know that stuff is there. But there's a power higher than that. But so, so, you know, we can go for the divination. But we're just we're still missing the mark. We're not gonna receive any satisfaction, even though, ooh, I I I you know I, I heard about the future. I heard a future event, and it came true. Oh, okay. Well, that's divination. That has nothing to do, you know. That has nothing to do with the Lord. 
So that's that's Nakash. That's the serpent. We know in Revelation 20, it says the serpent of old, the devil, our enemy. And um, he is... Uh, so we have the serpent, Nakash. And what does it say? He's subtle. He's subtle. More crafty than any other beast. So he's subtle. The enemy is subtle. So I just think he's that divination, that subtle divination in our lives. The serpent. The subtleness of, you know, when we look up that word subtle, let me look it up real quick. I have this here. But subtle is just slightly off. Uh, so delicate or precise as to be difficult to analyze or describe. Okay? So we're learning something about the enemy. He's subtle. So difficult, so delicate or precise to be difficult to analyze or describe. Okay? So... Um, He's crafty. The enemy is crafty. And that, that, if we just get that point, wow, the enemy is crafty. He's subtle. And then he twists God's word. God said you could eat of any tree in the garden except for this one. He said, did God really say you can't eat of any of the trees? Subtly twisting God's word. Right? That's why it's so important to know God's word for ourselves. Right? so important to know God's word. God gave a clear, you know what the Bible says about God's word, right? It's the light to our feet. It's the lamp unto our path. It's something that we can hold on to even though it seems like, wow, the devil, he's, he's so crafty. How are we going to defeat him? You know, well, we're going to hold on to God's word for one. We're going to hold on to God's word. So, I want to read uh, 2 Corinthians 11.3. You don't have to go there. I'll read it for you guys. But you can if you want. And this was Paul. And he knew about this story. We know about this story now. Man and woman in the garden. Here comes the, the serpent. The crafty serpent. And he comes and twists God's word to the woman. He comes to the woman and he twists God's word. And in 2 Corinthians 11.3, it says, I fear, Paul's talking to the church. He said, I fear somehow your pure and undivided devotion to Christ will be corrupted just as Eve was deceived by the cunning ways of the serpent. You happily put up with whatever anyone tells you, even if they preach a different Jesus than the one we preach or a different kind of spirit than the one you received or a different kind of gospel than the one you believed. Amen? But I don't consider myself inferior in any way to these super apostles who teach such things. I may be unskilled as a speaker, but I'm not lacking in knowledge. We've made this clear to you in every way, pos in every possible way. Was I wrong when I humbled myself and honored you by preaching God's good news to you without expecting anything in return? I robbed other churches by accepting their contributions so I could serve you at no cost. And when I was with you and didn't have enough to live on, I did not become a financial burden to anyone. For the brothers who came from Macedonia brought me all that I needed. I've never been a burden on you. I never will be. As surely as the truth of Christ is in me, no one in all of Greece will ever stop me from boasting about this. Why? Because I don't I love you? God knows that I do. But I will continue doing what I've always done. This will undercut those who are looking for an opportunity to boast that their work is just like ours. You know, we're going to continue to do what we've done. Preaching Jesus for years and years and years and years. The power is here. The power of the gospel is simple and it's clear. But he says this. These people are false apostles. They're deceitful workers who disguise themselves as apostles of Christ. But I'm not surprised. Even Satan disguises himself as an angel of light. So it is no wonder that his servants also disguise themselves as servants of righteousness. In the end, they'll get the punishment their wicked deeds deserve. Okay. These are the workers of, of the, the, ser the subtle serpent. They're so wise in their own eyes. 
right? And um, so, however, the good thing about this is um, we read, it says that um, the serpent was crafty more than any other beast of the field uh, that the Lord God had made. The Lord God made the serpent. The Lord God made the devil. He doesn't compare to God. He cannot be on the same level with God. The serpent can't. He doesn't. He can't. He is a creature. He's created. And the scripture says, submit to God. Resist the devil and he will flee. He's created by God. And um, so that's, uh, that's, that's, that's important to know. That the devil, he's created by God. He's so crafty, crafty. But what we got to do is we have the clear word of God that we can stick to. And uh, also look, look, at, look, at the, look at the serpent. He comes after the woman in this verse. We see that, right? <laughs> he comes after the woman, you know. And uh, w uh, women, we got to get smart. We got to hold on to God's word too, okay? We can't get tripped up again, okay, guys? Man. We could be all good, but... Just kidding. But the Bible says, hey, respect the women. The Bible, says, the Bible says respect women as the weaker vessel, right? But does Satan respect women? No. He goes to the women and he lies to them. You know, we got to look at ourselves, too. Are we respecting women? Are we going after them? Are we telling them lies? You know, are we, are we little serpents? You know, it's true. I'm, I gotta understand this. You know, God's called us to, to something greater, something higher than, than being tricked by another created thing. You know, God, see, we were created in man's image, in God's image. The serpent was not, okay? He doesn't want the best for us, okay? He wants to get us off, off. He wants to take God's clear, perfect word, his promises, he wants to twist them a little bit. To get us away from God's word. All we have to do is let God be God. Amen. God, you gave a command. And I'm going to follow it. God, Amen. you're telling me this. I'm going to do it. I give you my life. I'm not going after this other subtle tricks. Okay. The enemy twisted scripture. In verse... Uh, let's go on to verse 2. And the woman said to the serpent... We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. Verse 2. So the woman, she spoke to the serpent. She knew the word. Right? She knew the word. So it must not be enough to know the word, right? James 1.22. We got to be doers of the word. So that's important for us to know. Women, okay, doers of the word. Guys, your turn's coming. <laughs> we all need to be doers of the word. And you know, that's why it caught me so, it was so funny. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee. So all we have to do is submit to God. Submit to that word of God, and the devil's going to flee. And of course, Jesus taught us how to do that when he was tempted. So... And the woman says, Servant, we may eat of the, the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the midst of the garden, neither shall you touch it lest you die. And, uh, but the serpent said to the woman, You'll not surely die. Wow, really? Didn't God say you'll die? What does that make the devil? The devil is a liar. You can write that down. That's the point. The devil is the liar. He's a liar. One thing about liars that I've noticed, they don't have authority. They don't have authority. They don't have uh, what it takes to tell the truth. Because you think about a king, 
He does whatever he wants. Hey, are you smoking some drugs? Yeah, I sure am. I'm the king. But a liar's like, no, I'm not. I'm not smoking any drugs. Because he don't have any authority. A king just said, yeah, I sure am. I need you to go get me some water. You know? <laughs> it's like, but a liar doesn't have any authority. A liar... And, and uh, so that's one of the more important things. When I came to Christ, it's like, wow, God's pressing on my heart. You don't even need to tell a little white lie. You're a child of most high God. You're the head, not the tail. You don't need to lie anymore. You don't need to lie to kick it. Amen. And by the way, this is the power of God. A changed life. Not parlor tricks. Okay, not uh, anything else, but just this changed life. People's lives being changed in, in the power of Jesus Christ in His Word. Now, I heard uh, somebody say this morning, if uh, if you're drilling for oil for twenty, or if you're drilling for twenty minutes and you don't strike oil, quit boring. I feel flat. All right, never mind. <laughs> if you're drilling for oil for more than 20 minutes and you don't strike, quit boring. Okay. God's word isn't boring, though, right? Amen. Boring. 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 Oh. Drilling is boring, and also just being up here can be boring. Okay. The guy that told it this morning was about 80 years old. He knew how to tell it. So we all laughed. We all laughed. He had a... The pastor this morning that preached, I was in Gilbert, Sunrise, he was a man of wisdom. And you know what he was preaching on? Prayer. The power of prayer. And it reminded me of Pastor Kevin. And I just feel like we're all lined up in, in the power of prayer. we we got to be praying to God with a sincere heart. So the devil's a liar. And that's an indication that he doesn't have any authority. All, he, he can't make you do something. He cannot make you do transgress against God's law. He can't make you, but he can try to lie to you and he can try to manipulate you. And so as we go on, he, he usually does this too as we go on in this uh, scripture. So he said, you will surely not die for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God knowing good and evil. Okay. He brought a lie and then he brought a temptation. And I just think that, wow, a lot of times he uses those two things together. Twisting God's word, giving you a temptation. Hey, I got to leave this place, okay, uh, because I want to get high. And then twisting a little like, oh, the leadership isn't right here. So I've got I to gotta open door. So the enemy is coming in like that. But, but God's word says, hey, when you make a vow, delay not to pay it. That's the precise, clear word. And we say, I'm going to let God be God. He knows I made that vow. I used to think that, hey, I made this vow to God for six months. I know he's hearing me. So I don't care if the whole wall's burned down and I'm like the only one in my room and God's sending a raven to like send me hot dogs. They're like throwing the hot dogs in my room. You know, I knew, hey, I made a vow for six months. I didn't, if Pastor Walt came up and just backhanded me and just said, I said, I made a vow for six months. God, if this is where you want me at, if, if you want me here, but you know what? This is an awesome place. This is an amazing place. Hallelujah! This is the, no, just, honestly, guys. Honestly, guys. It is amazing. Pastor Walt, uh, it's just an honor. It's a privilege to be right here in this place. And it's a privilege to follow Pastor Walt. And uh, I'm just so uh, thankful and so glad that, uh, you know, he's helped me to just focus on God and go to God. Every time I bring a problem to him, it's a little bit annoying, but... He is always just saying, go to God. You know, basically, you want to hear what God has to say. And, um, but it's so, it helped, it's helped me a lot. Because there's going to be times when the devil is lying to you. You got these temptations. And there's nowhere to go. And you got to go to God. Okay. So, uh, he, James, in James, it says, hey, uh, we by our own, our own desires. Right, our own desires they, they lead us off into uh, into temptation, which turn into sin, and we see that that's what happened to the woman. She had a lie, she had a desire, and she acted upon that desire, 
in verse 6. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was delightful to the eyes, and that the tree was desired to make one wise. And I just thought, wow, really? It's going to make you wise? I mean, that seems like the dumbest thing you could do. You know, God said, don't eat that tree. And now you're looking at the tree like, ooh, that's going to make me wise. Like, what? So obviously, this was a desire that she had. Right? This was a desire, and she was walking by what? She was walking by sight. <laughs> Did I just pull a coach? Raise your hand if you think she was walking by faith. Wrong. All right, coach does that to us all the time, right? Okay, so she was walking by sight. So we, what we have to do is walk by faith. Because look at this. In her eyes, it looked good. It looked like, hey, this is going to make me wise. But hey, she knew God's word. So she needed to walk by faith and not by sight. So uh, she ate and then she also gave some to her husband who was with her and he ate. Okay? And then Adam blamed her later on too. God's like, hey, what's going on, Pastor Walt? The woman you gave me. But, um, but, but then Adam ate too. And we know that there was an opportunity too for Adam there to be listening. Okay, to say, hey, we're not supposed to be listening to the devil. Here's God's clear word. Come with me. Remember that tree with the swing? Let's go over there. Okay? Let's leave this serpent divination alone. Okay, so we have a, so it's on it's on all of us. But this this is the story. This is the beginning of the gospel message. This is when sin entered into the world, and this shows you how God has a, a perfect plan for our life, and we get deceived. Don't get deceived. That's all I'm trying to say. Look to Jesus, the author and finisher of your faith. Okay, it doesn't matter if who is over you, who's your leader. Follow me as I follow Christ. And if I'm not following Christ, follow Jesus. Keep on following Jesus until, hey, so now somebody's following you. Okay, just keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't get caught up in all that other stuff. You know, and that's what I want to tell you right now. God... In my life, it seems like there's just been a tornado that's going around since I, when I, and I'm right in the middle, and I'm focusing on God, and there's temptation, and there's lies, and there's the, there's the devil, and there's everything, but as I just focus on God, he just, do 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 and then I jump on the flagpole, all the money just piles up. You know, as I just focus on God, new levels, new devils, new levels, new devils, new levels, new devils. If I take my, if I put my eye on the devil, oh my goodness. He's got ray guns and ray bands and Gucci something and, you know, but I just focus on God. Or, oh, there's a, you know, there's a turtle now that has wings on it. And there's a red shell that can, okay, in the game, in the level. So as we just focus on God, no, some of you guys didn't get that. But that's a Mario reference, okay? Yeah. Super Nintendo. Oh, no. Combat. Finish him. Fortnite. Okay, but as we focus on God, we get all the finishing moves. You know, as we focus on God, He tells us about backpack A. Backpack A. Oh wait, was that when He backpack B. throws the fire scorpion? He takes off his thing and he shoots fire. Okay, as we focus on God, He raises up. He raises up to new heights and new levels and new devils and. Um, I just want to say, you know, with that, Romans 5.12, I'll read that to us. You don't have to go there, but you can't write it down. Uh, Adam, yes, Adam's one sin 
brings condemnation for everyone. So just from that one man, and you see that it was the man. It was the man's responsibility, guys. It's the man's responsibility. It's time to be men of God, men of valor, okay? And that's what we're here learning to do, to be men of valor. So it's the man's responsibility. He said, just like that one man sin, death entered into the world. Death entered into the world. We were all born. Just like when I was, I think I was baptized, you know, so and so. No, we are all born sinners. And until we make that decision to accept Jesus Christ, that's when we become born again. Because the Bible says, Adam's one sin brings condemnation. That means we're all born into that condemnation. But Christ's one act of righteousness brings a right relationship with God. And new life for everyone. How many people want new life? Amen. Because one person disobeyed God, many became sinners. But because one other person obeyed God, many will be made righteous. God's law was given so that all people could see how sinful they were. I know my mom, she had to take a look at her own sin. And it hurt. And we all need to take a look at our own sin and get to that place. And that's God opening up our eyes to say, wow, I'm a horrible sinner. And you just say, oh, I'm just doing my own thing, you know. Uh, that's God opening up. So just as sin ruled over, okay, but as people sin more and more, God's wonderful grace became more abundant. So just as sin ruled over all people and brought them to death, now God's wonderful grace rules instead giving us right standing with God and resulting in, in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 Sin came into the world. The devil is there. He's on the outskirts. He's trying to get us off our game. He's trying to get us away from God's word, but he's a defeated foe. Amen. And we got to remember that though. We need to get into God's word. I got a big daily Bible reading plan. How many men of God and women of God have a daily Bible reading plan. Okay. It's pretty important, I think. It's really important. To me, it's really important in my life. I have a daily Bible reading plan. I can give you one. Reach out. You just check the boxes off. That's it. Then you know. But God's word is a light under my feet. And that's one of part of my testimony. God wants to give me direction. He wants me to defeat the devil. He's giving me clear direction. And it's worth studying about Jesus. Whatever you're studying, put that aside. Study about Jesus. Jesus came into his own creation, 100% man, 100% God. He was born of a virgin. He came in as a little baby at 33. He gave up his life and died on the cross so that we could have that right relationship with God. But what he did after that, he rose from the dead. Three days later, he defeated the serpent. Like God said in Genesis 3 when you read on. It says, he'll bruise our hill, but... Will bruise his head. Okay? That's right. Okay. So, when he rose again, he defeated sin and death. He was seen by more than 500 people. He said, I'm going to the Father. It's for your benefit. I'm going to send the Holy Spirit, which will come and live inside of you and give you power to testify about this power. This is the power to change lives. Jesus Christ, just like I said, we have that new life. So, if you want that new life, you raise your hand. How many people raise your hand? Let me see. Okay, now, if your hand's raised up, I want you to do one more thing. Come down to the altar. If your hand's raised up, come down to the altar. Come on down. If you want that new life. I remember I raised my hand a hundred times. I wanted that new life of God. I wanted that new life of God. My life was messed up, and I needed Jesus. Jesus is the way. He's the truth. He's the life. Nobody comes to the Father but, by through, but through Him. Amen? So this, let's, let's repeat this prayer just to ask God to come into our life and say, I want to just repeat this prayer to say, God, God I want to do, do what pleases you, but I need your help. I, need your help. I, believe, I believe that Jesus, that Jesus died, on cross, died on the cross so I could be forgiven, so be forgiven of, my of my sins and have a relationship with you. I believe Jesus rose from the dead. Conquering sin, conquering sin, conquering death, conquering death. So, I could have life so I could have life and defeat, and defeat the devil. I ask you to put your Holy Spirit in me, God. 
I receive your Holy Spirit. I receive your free gift. And I want that power of the Holy Spirit to have a changed life. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know why that's such good preaching? Because he preached what happened to him. Where he was and how God got all of it and changed. There's nothing better than that. Than to see the transformation in his mom. You know, I'll just say one thing real quick. The Apostle Paul says, you know, as bad as I was, one thing I do is forget the past. The past no longer has control over us. He's no longer whatever. He's no longer a sinner. He's a man of God. He'll tell you about it. <laughs> Amen. So y'all ready to just go about your business? We're going to have mom praise out. Hello, Heavenly Father, I just, first of all, we just praise you. And thank you for being here with us right in this moment. Um, we ask that you watch over us as we continue on our journey with you. In Jesus' name, amen. Go get him. God bless you.